In the previous lesson, you learned how to tell a procedure to ignore a runtime error when one occurs. Of course, in most situations, you won't be able to get away with such a simple approach. Instead, you'll want to tell your procedure to perform a different set of instructions in the event of an error. You can achieve this by creating a custom error handler, as we'll explain in this part of the lesson. Let's begin by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and if requested, choose to enable content by clicking the button at the top of the worksheet. The workbook allows you to search for hit films or flop films by clicking one of the two buttons and then typing in part of the name of the film that you want to look for. If I type in the word star and either click OK or press Enter, as long as the name of the film can be found, I'll be presented with some information about that film, in this case, how much money it made. The workbook has one main source of error, and that's if it can't find what I've typed into the input box. If I return back to the main menu and click the Find Hit Film button again, I could type in either the name of a film which doesn't exist or just some nonsensical text. I could even just cancel the input box to return an empty string, and all of those things would cause the system to fail. If I click OK, I'll end up with a runtime error. As usual, clicking the debug button will show us which line has caused the error, and we can see that it's the one that tries to use the find method to find the name of the film that we've typed into the input box. The instruction we've written fails because the find method returns a reference to nothing if it can't find what we're looking for. And we've subsequently attempted to apply the select method to the result of the find method, and when that's nothing, that simply can't occur. Let's reset the procedure by clicking the reset button on the toolbar and look at how we can solve this problem. When the find method fails, it would be useful to inform the user that the requested film could not be found and then simply end the procedure. We can achieve this by redirecting the code to a different section within the same subroutine if an error occurs on this line. Let's begin by adding an on error statement above the one which has caused our error. We can say on error, and then this time, rather than resume next, as we saw in the previous lesson, we're going to tell the code to go to a different section in the same subroutine. We can make up a label or a descriptive word which, which describes what error might have occurred. I'm going to call my label film not found. We should also make sure to disable this error handler after the line that causes the problem. And as we saw in the previous lesson, we can do that by saying on error, go to zero. Now, when a runtime error is caused by the line containing the find method, the subroutine will look for a line label called film not found and immediately jump to that section. So the next job is to create that section of code. Let's start by copying the label we've created rather than typing it in again. And then we can scroll down to the end of this subroutine. The label must be created within the same subroutine as the on error statement. So let's just paste in the film not found label at the bottom just before end sub. To change this into a label, we simply need to type in a colon after its name. And if you do that correctly, when you move to the next line of code, that label should be outdented to the left hand side of the screen. We can now enter the instructions that we want the procedure to carry out if the find method fails. For our example, we'll just show a simple message box. So let's start by using the message box function. And then we can write a message that tells the user that we could not find, followed by the name of the film that they have typed in. So I can concatenate the value of the film to find variable. So film to find, there it is. I'll just make the message box a little more interesting by applying a symbol. I'll show the VB exclamation symbol. And then I can also change the title of the message by changing the title parameter to something like problem finding film. The message box is the final instruction in the subroutine. So when the user clicks OK, the subroutine should just end. So let's give this system a quick, simple test. If we switch back to the Excel workbook, choose the menu worksheet and attempt to find a hit film, typing in some nonsensical text, which we know won't be found in the list, click OK. And this time, rather than a runtime error message, we're shown our sensible custom error message instead. And when we click OK, the subroutine just ends. 
When you've created an error handler, you should also test that your code behaves normally when no errors occur. We've inadvertently added some strange behavior to our system, which is only apparent if we search for a film which does exist. Let's head back to the menu sheet, click Find Hit Film, and again, I'll go back to Finding Star. When I do that, I'll first of all be presented with the same sensible message I saw earlier, but when I click OK, I'll also see my error handling message, could not find star. So why is that happening? If we return to the VB editor to look at the subroutine, the label that we've added is not a separator in this subroutine. It doesn't prevent our code from continuing. Imagine that label wasn't there at all if I temporarily delete it. If everything works according to plan, then we see the sensible message displaying information on the film, and then it immediately follows through into the error message. I'm going to undo deleting the label to bring it back. The simplest way to solve this problem is to add an exit sub statement immediately before the error handling section. So to achieve that, we can simply type in exit sub before the error handling label. Now the subroutine can only reach the error handling section if an error actually occurs, but let's just quickly go back to Excel and test that that's the case. If we return to the menu sheet and try to find a hit film typing in nonsensical text, when we click OK or press Enter, we just get our standard error message. If we then go back to the menu sheet and search for something which does exist, let's go for star again to be consistent. If we click OK this time, we see our information message but when we click OK, this time we don't see the error message.